my female 31, brother-in-law Tim, 30, lost his wife eight months ago. We have never been close due to his brutal honesty and his hurtful remarks to me all the time. He stopped paying rent for his former apartment because he didn't work and asked to move in with my husband and me. I had reasons to say no. One of them is that I'm taking care of my five-month-old son. It's hard, but with Tim's constant requests like cooking for him, cleaning his room, and fixing stuff for him, it's ten times harder. I tried to be graceful and suck it up, but he's become annoying, constantly commenting on my weight, saying things like, are you comfortable looking like that? Or, wow, you've changed so much since you had the baby. It's annoying, but my husband asked me to let it go, since Tim is grieving and isn't thinking rationally. Yesterday was the final straw. I had my best friends over for the first time after my son was born. We were in the living room chatting while Tim was asleep. He sleeps till 4 p.m. He showed up later and sat with us and started taking part in the conversation. We were talking about being busy all day and he interrupted me and asked, so when are you planning on losing that baby weight? I guess you should take advantage of the last month of summer and get in shape before it's too late. I was in shock and dismay and embarrassed by my friends going radio silence like that. He doubled down by looking at me, waiting for an answer. I bluntly said, actually, I'm not planning on losing any baby weight anytime soon. I am, however, planning on losing some dead weight that is you and your never-ending demands all day every day while I'm trying to care for my newborn. He told me to chill, but I got up from the couch and said I couldn't put up with this anymore and he had to pack and leave. He didn't think I was serious, but then headed upstairs and called his brother. My husband came home after my friends left and called me ridiculous for kicking his grieving brother out over a question he asked. I said he embarrassed me in front of my friends and that I'm done catering to his demands from cooking, cleaning while trying to care for my infant with no sleep, nor self-care for myself. And this is how he treats me? He agreed, but said kicking Tim out would be cruel, nuclear, and unnecessary since we can work this out differently. I refused to discuss it and said he had to go. I gave him two days to find a place to stay and my husband is convincing me I was making a mistake and should have some empathy towards Tim and his situation as a new widower. Besides that, it's my husband's home too, so I can't make this decision alone. Did I overreact here? Not the idiot, but if I were you, I'd be evaluating the people near and dear to you. Your husband shouldn't have let him disrespect you in the first place with not only his rude comments, but his cooking and cleaning demands. The misogyny is strong with this one. Your friends shouldn't have gone radio silent. No hate though, not everyone's confrontational, but I would have rolled up my sleeves if that happened to my friend, lol. Anyways, this dude sounds like a middle schooler attracted to you, so he tries to knock down your self-esteem so that you think maybe he's all you deserve. Sorry about the loss of his wife, but being an idiot widower doesn't make the idiot part any less prominent. I'm disappointed in the friends too. Hopefully they were just too shocked to respond before OP handled it. Also, even if he was the nicest person in the world, just how long were you two going to allow an unemployed person to live on your couch? From your post, it didn't appear that they were actively seeking employment. Not the idiot. Tim is a tool. And why on earth does he expect you to cook and clean for him? He's an adult, and he should be doing that for himself. Instead, he doesn't work, he lives with you for nothing, and he can't even flick a duster around or make some lunch. I'm tempted to suggest his wife faked her death to get away from him, but if he stays, he needs to do his share. Yeah, I was thinking no wonder his wife left him when I remembered she died. OP screw these men trying to calm down an irrational woman. I hate this kind of stuff so much. What is your husband thinking? letting you be a mother to his grown brother. Nope, I would have kicked him out too. Husband would be a close second. Good for you for standing up and having self-respect. Everyone involved in this is in their late 20s to early 30s. We, I and my other friends, all guys, kept on telling our female friend to block the guy every time she told us that she was uncomfortable with the things he did. Showed up in our city, which is three hours from where he lives, unannounced to try and meet her lied about being sick so she'd be concerned about him, sent her gifts in her office even when she told him not to, kept on messaging her even when she said she was overwhelmed by his attention and needed space, 
But she kept talking to him because according to her, she felt bad about just tossing him aside because he was there for her when she was recovering from depression. We told her she had no obligation to keep on talking to him if she didn't like the things he did and that continuing to talk to him will just make him push your boundaries even more. We even volunteered to call him and be the ones to tell him to stop contacting her, but she kept on talking to him anyway. This went on for two months. Every time we told her to stop talking to him, she would say she will stop. But the next time we asked if they're still talking, she'd say she felt guilty and couldn't do it. It got to the point where I asked her if she liked the push-pull drama she has with the guy. She said maybe, she doesn't know. She doesn't want to think about it. The guy ended up showing up at her work and wanted her to go with him. He wouldn't leave and security had to be called. It scared her to her bones. I helped her get a cease and desist letter, but she's crying to us that she's scared that he'll show up at her home next, cease and desist letter or not. I told her that it's her fault this went down as badly as it did because we've told her multiple times over two months to nip it in the bud, but she wouldn't listen. She cried even more and said that she can't believe I'm saying this to her. I told her that of course her safety is important. That's why I helped her get the cease and desist letter, but she has to know that her actions have consequences. If you keep engaging a stalker, despite your friends telling you not to for two whole months, you can't cry later that you can't be blamed for your stalker's escalating behavior. So am I the idiot? You are an idiot. She is the victim here. The fault is all on the stalker. Even if your friend lacks some backbone to put an end to the stalker's attention, none of this is on her. Even if she had said something to the stalker, nothing guarantees it would have worked anyway. Those people usually don't stop when asked to. And calling her on it when she was terrified is an idiot thing to do. I get it's nice to be able to say I told you so, but you should try to be a friend instead of feeding your ego. You are an idiot. Drop it. She understands what the problem is. You don't have to keep pointing out that she could have done things differently. You're kicking her while she's down. The important thing right now is keeping her safe. If you want to talk to her later after it all blows over about safe ways to proceed, do it then. You are an idiot. I think you were trying to go for the tough love, but you were just punching someone who was down. You could have said something like, if he shows up, call the cops or pretend you aren't home till the cops show up. But instead, you chose to vent your frustration at someone who, by your own words, was already crying and shaken. An apology is in order. I'm a single father of Claire, 25, and Jess, 19 female. Claire's husband and I have a formal relationship, but frankly, neither me nor Jess like spending too much time with him, but we're very, very cordial. He came over and sat with Jess and me for coffee, we talked about weather, politics, and daily issues. Then he started talking about my assets out of nowhere. I felt a bit bothered discussing stuff like that, but I was happy to answer a few questions he had. I said I was planning on selling my two properties and using the money for my upcoming surgery, and the rest will be split equally between my daughters besides the house, as mentioned in my will. He talked about how unfair he thought it was that both sisters got an equal inheritance asking me to consider the fact that both are at very different stages in life. For example, Claire has a family to support and medical expenses, debts to cover, and is a stay-at-home mom. At the same time, Jess is single, plans on being child-free, and has a job already. Jess will probably waste money irresponsibly on greedy guys she dates instead of an investment. Jess got uncomfortable, and I responded Claire's circumstances wouldn't change anything in my will, and the decision is made. He said, Jesus, you seem to enjoy blaming Claire for deciding to start a family at a young age, don't you? Then went about my grandchildren and my obligation towards them and their future. I said, yes, those are my grandkids, but am I the one responsible for providing for them? He politely explained that I should help him and Claire out and asked me to reconsider giving Claire more than half while Jess got less. I politely but firmly stated that Jess deserves as much as her older sister gets since she's young and needs help with college debts. I asked him to respect my decision, wanting my will to be executed the way I wanted it and that I didn't want him making such an unnecessary fuss about it later. He just smugly smiled and sarcastically said, I guess you'll just have to die and we'll see then. I was shocked, like, was this a joke? I got upset and stood up and pointed at the door 
and told him I had enough of all these half polite, half mean conversations and asked him to please leave. Jess asked me to take it easy, but it was already too late and the argument escalated. He said he was hurt by me kicking him out for just making a suggestion and that I was holding in all this hate for him and finally found an excuse to insult him. He told Claire about how I kicked him out for just pointing out that I'm not doing enough for my family. I get they're struggling, but I couldn't ignore his dismissiveness towards Jess, acting like she doesn't have a life. We're known to be cordial, so to hear I kicked him out was a shock to my family. Legally, I have nothing to worry about, but morally, I don't think I handled this conflict the way I was supposed to. Not the idiot. My word, he's just waiting for you to die so he can get your money. That's horrible. Why can't he support his wife? Sounds like a deadbeat loser. Honestly, how old is this guy? He got Claire pregnant young and is probably pushing her to stay at home and is super sketchy with his father-in-law and focused on her inheritance as his own? Not the idiot, of course. The comment about your death could not have been more outrageous. I would have a very, very difficult time having future contact with someone who made that comment about me. To the main point, it is your money to do as you please. You can leave it all to charity for all anyone is concerned. It is kind of you to share your assets with your daughters, but they need to make their way through life. Not the idiot. Gold diggers come in all sizes and shapes, and I think your oldest daughter snared herself one. In your place, I'd work with my lawyer to ensure that idiot could never get his hands on my daughter's inheritance. The thing you could have done better, OP, was that you could have refused to discuss your estate plan with your son-in-law. I would keep an eye on him and how he treats Claire. My 24 female, boyfriend of over two years, 27, owns a newer full-size truck. I think he sinks way too much of his income into it and should probably drive a regular car since he only drives it back and forth to work and to do errands, but he loves it and it's his baby. My older brother, 31, and his wife, 31, recently bought a house and moved out of their apartment. I was at my parents' house with the two of them when they announced it to us. When I asked them when they were moving, they told me and I told them, well, hey, my boyfriend has his truck, which I'm sure will come in handy. I'll have to ask him, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind you using it and helping you out. So they told me that this would be great. When I told my boyfriend about it though, to say that he started grumbling would be an understatement. He started going on about how he didn't want to give up his Saturday to help my brother and his wife move and how he didn't want to put that wear and tear on his truck. He said that people moving stuff in and out of his truck bed was likely to put scratches on it and how I shouldn't have volunteered him in his truck without talking to me first. I told him that I told them that I'd have to ask him first and that it was ultimately up to him. He responded that there was no way for him to say no to it without looking like an idiot to my family. So I pretty much made it so he had no real choice. Honestly, I think he's being a baby and should just be happy to help. My brother actually helped my boyfriend get his current job, so my boyfriend owes him one. But maybe I was a little presumptuous. What do you think? You are the idiot. You can't do that for him. You should have said nothing and asked him first. If he now feels obliged to do it, you need to help. It's very hard work. People can only offer themselves to do something like that. I bet he doesn't tell his sibling that you're going to make dinner for them and their 30 guests because they helped you with a plant too. I say you are the idiot. You pretty much volunteered someone else's time without asking them. It doesn't matter if it's family or not. It's still their day and not yours to give away. And let's be honest, moving sucks. And people can't say he can back out. You pretty much backed him into a corner to not be able to say no without looking like a total idiot to your family. Also, you really shouldn't talk so badly about how he spends his money on a hobby that he enjoys. If his bills are paid, then what he does in his spare time that gives him joy is not stupid. OP, how about you rent a truck on your dime and help them move? Do it. Don't be a baby. You should be happy to help. But for real, this wasn't about your brother getting help. This was about you wanting to be perceived as helpful and caring without doing any of the work. I, 30 female, have been with my boyfriend, 30, for about six months now. We have known each other way longer. While we weren't dating and just friends, he'd offer to pay for dinners, drinks, gifts, etc. I didn't expect any of those things, but it was super nice. 
This continued until about three months into our relationship. And now he asked if I could send him $150 every week and he'll match it. And that's our spending money for the week. If it goes over, then I send him more to make up the difference the following week. Let me say my boyfriend is way better off than I am. I am struggling to get by right now and I'm working two jobs. He has a lot of money, gambles frequently, and always buys lavish gifts for himself or makes high bets on sports games, gets massages, etc. In no way do I believe that he should pay for all of my things. I just feel a little bit ripped off and like I'm not getting a relationship, but more of a transactional one, I guess. I want to get gifts, treated to massages, dinner, etc. Is that asking too much, lol? Most recently, he invited me to go to Chicago with him. He flies free because he uses his friend's flights who's a pilot. So he bought my plane ticket and then asked me to pay him back for it. I don't know. Am I the idiot for thinking this is odd? Maybe a bit selfish? A red flag? LOL? I'd be happy to pay as we go. I don't mind paying for my things. The $150 a week bothers me because I don't control it nor know where it's going and I feel like I may be getting ripped off on that. I work five days a week and I don't know how seeing each other two days a week adds up to be past that. We do get dinners but nothing frivolous. I've never questioned it because I don't want to be an idiot and I don't want him to feel like he needs to take care of me. Not the idiot. This is so weird. For a friend or partner. I would never offer to buy them a gift of something, plane ticket for example, and then ask for half of it back. Like WTF. It's clearly something he would enjoy more if you were there. Your relationship has become transactional and it's very weird. When I dated, my partners and I had this thing that we would pay for ourselves if we both decided to go out. If I wanted to plan the date, I would take care of it all and vice versa. But there was clear communication. And that way, if I was dating partners that were less financially well off, they could plan lovely dates but within their budget, etc. To demand half up front is very weird and makes the relationship about power and money. You are the idiot. You want a transactional relationship where he pays for everything. Don't try and twist it around to make him look like a bad guy here. If you want those luxury things, work hard, save, and buy them. The only red flag here is your attitude. Wait, you guys are spending $150 a week? Each? Like $1,200 a month? Is that for bills, for spending money? Because if it's fun money, that's insane. No wonder you're struggling. Everyone's the idiot here. Asking him to treat you to dinner is one thing. Believing he should pay for your flight is another. You sound like you have two different lifestyles and neither one is communicating. Stop paying $600 on fun stuff when you're struggling with two jobs. Then if he doesn't offer to pay or find cheaper options, you'll know that you're not as big of a priority.